Once you have identified one or two specific things in a system that you want to change, we can then think backwards. So what does it actually take for these changes to happen? Like if you want to change a policy, who needs to propose the policy? Who needs to make a decision? Which arguments uh, and data do you need to have in place? Um, which ambassadors and champions for your policy change do you need to establish? You know, like just thinking, thinking about the change in terms of a puzzle, which pieces need to come together for this to actually happen. And then, and only then, can you think about your specific contributions. So are you the one who is going to develop the champion for the policy or are you going to provide the data and the stories or like what, what's your role in this broader storyline that leads to a systems change? And you'll see that the final step uh, is not a magic wand anymore, but it's called contribution. So instead of um, some organization, Having, having the solution for something and just uh, you know, waving the wand to make a problem disappear. We now collaborate with others and, and realize that, that we, can only, um, yeah, we, can, we can only be powerful if we, um, we tell the system change together with other organizations and change makers. Um, do you have any questions about quick fix cycles and this different approach, which, uh, which we call the systems approach? Uh, I actually uh, need something. Uh, so I guess uh, it would be very useful if you can give uh, some examples of uh, um, the part of where we tackle the system, where the problem like is no longer exists. Uh, and like running after the symptoms and so if, if you can just like give an example of what the system the symptoms are and what the, th the systems could be and the and two different approaches to them. Right um, and um, usually when I do this for foundations or young change makers um, I would do that at this point but luckily we have a round um, of Ashoka fellows so I don't need to. Um, because that's actually what you're doing all the time anyway. Um, and that's, um, let me just continue for another five minutes and then you are going to provide exactly those examples yourself. Um, yeah, so let's, let's maybe just move on to do just that. Um, so now, um, when, when we think about these five steps, um, I mentioned that the second step is identifying the root causes and the third step is to, um, to identify one of those causes that you want to focus on, that you want to change. And we are going to zoom in to, into those two steps now um, with a little exercise. Um, this, is what, this is what we are aiming for. Um, don't, there's a lot of text on this slide, but don't worry, I'm going to go through it slowly. Um, this is taken from, the, from our systems change crash course, and it just outlines an Ashoka Fellow example. Um, this particular one comes from, uh, comes from Raj, an Ashoka Fellow from the, uh, in the US. Uh, and Raj is, um, is building this, this new system of participatory defense. He tries to help um, underprivileged uh, people to navigate the, the criminal justice system. And basically the, the problem that he's concerned about, uh, this is stated on the, the top left side, um, is that uh, basically the United States has too many prisoners. Uh, they, they just put too many people in prisons. And this is, uh, this is one part of the problem. And the other is that there is a big disparity. So they, they, they mainly put um, minority groups in prison. And Raj wants to change that. Now, he, he could be um, just helping individual people and protect them and become a criminal defense lawyer or something like that, but he's a systems changing social entrepreneur and so he doesn't do that. He, he looks at the systems that are responsible for this problem. And he identified three that are most relevant for him. There are more, of course, but, but these three um, are uh, what he focuses on. The first one is the US criminal defense system. And um, he, uh, Rush says that um, many of the accused just don't have the knowledge and the resources to, to really defend themselves in, um, in court. Uh, and that's a problem. The second system that contributes to the overall problem is that, um, that people 
could actually navigate the system better if they have the money to pay bail. Bail is like, so the, the court says, okay, we are going to have this proceeding, but if you pay money, then until the proceeding is over, you can actually be a free person and walk around and do your job and be with your family. But many people don't have the money to pay the bill. And so um, like, uh, especially poor people end up in jail when they, they wouldn't have to otherwise. And then the third, the third problem, the third root of this, this tree um, is that the US jail system is privatized. And so there are a lot of, lots of companies who have a financial incentive to not help people in prison because the longer they stay, the more money they earn. And the more likely they are to return to prison, again, the more money they earn. And that's just a perverse incentive that keeps, um, keeps the cycle going. And so this would be a simple analysis of, um, of systemic root causes. Now, these, but, and, and it's not complete, right? Like the educational system, the healthcare system, they all also play a role, but these three are the, the ones that Raj focuses on. And these three are still too much for one social entrepreneur to change though. And so even, even within those three, Raj has to prioritize. And this is what he did. On the right hand side, you find a one sentence statement of Raj's systems change goal. And this is what we do with all Ashoka fellows who go through the globalizer program. We try to, to really narrow down the system change goal to one sentence, a very clear sentence that always follows the same structure. And in Raj's case, the sentence reads as follows. In the criminal defense system, we want to add a new role. In the following way, the community around the accused, the friends and family of the accused, provide additional knowledge, manpower, and social support to help the accused in court proceedings. This will lead to shorter sentences, especially for people who can't afford a lawyer. So remember the, the first um, root cause that Raj identified was that many accused don't have the money to defend themselves in court. They get these, um, these mandatory defense lawyers who don't have any time, they have way too many cases, they can't do anything. And so, but if, if the friends and family and the community around the accused help the defendant, um, the, the lawyer, to, um, to create profiles of the accused, to get all kinds of witness statements in order, to, um, to create a story of the accused um, and their role in the neighborhood, um, that can really change the way that a jury and, um, and a judge perceives the case. And basically what, what Raj is doing is he, he he establishes a new infrastructure that provides more resources to people um, in court. Um, and that would address one of these root causes and that if he manages to do that on a national level would have, he believes, a big effect on how many people actually go to prison and for how long they go to prison. All right, this is just, this is one, one example that, that would come out of a globalizer-like process. This would often take us about five weeks um, to develop. It sounds super simple, but, um, but to make it simple and concrete like this takes quite a bit of time. So yeah, this is, this is what we end up with. Do you have um, any questions about this? Does this make sense? Um, does this irritate you in any way? Does it resonate? I can add that not add, but just stress that building the community around the cause is the most important part of it. So I totally agree and I can relate with that. Uh, uh, I agree, totally. Yeah, and this is what we also see in the fellowship. Um, many of the tactics and the approaches that you choose overlap. I mean, you, you, you probably do it in a completely different area like in another country, in another topic area, but, but some of the principles are really the same and organizing communities around an issue um, is, is one of those tactics that we see again and again. And um, it's such a big one that we actually have sub tactics. So you, like within community mobilization and organizing, there are like three, right? And you know, there, there's, a, there's a system to this. There's a methodology that we can use yeah, for sure. All right, so this is what we are after, and that's what we are going to do now in the group. So how do you create these, uh, these analysis and these statements? Well, you first start with the systems that are responsible for a social problem. 
And, um, and there are quite a few of those systems, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, um, there's a list basically. So there, there are not indefinitely many. Um, here are just some examples. So economic systems, markets um, can be responsible for stuff. This can be legal markets like the, the car market or the, um, uh, the, the, what is it? The market for handicraft or stuff like that. Or it can also be illegal stuff like the drug market and the value chain for opioids. Um, it can be formal like the job market or informal like the marriage market and you know you, you look at you look at economic markets uh, uh, or systems then you can look at social fabrics like families or circles of friends or neighborhoods or associations and societies you can look at legal systems um, like like Raj was doing in the example um, like uh, and and then you can you can drill down a bit more um, like you can go by topic areas like criminal law or traffic law or the laws for political participation, whatever it might be, right? Um, and within law, you can look at legislation or law enforcement or legal interpretation. And so there are all these, there are all these high level systems and then the subsystems within them. That is an important um, aspect of systems that they are nested. So smaller systems make up bigger systems and they are all interrelated. And ideally, when we formulate our systems change goals, um, we want to be a little bit more specific than just saying, I want to change the education system. Um, so in, instead of being broad like that, we want to be specific and say, um, I want to change the teacher education system um, in, in Egypt um, by introducing a new pedagogical skill that is taught to all future teachers at university, you know, something, something very concrete or um, in, in the job market uh, in, um, in Morocco, I want to uh, change a certain way in which the state, you know, really, really concrete sentences like the one on the right hand side uh, that Raj developed for participatory defense. Um, so the first part is to identify a system and, and ideally a subsystem, um, like, you know, the, the law enforcement um, part or um, or the the illegal drug market or the human trafficking system or, st or stuff like that and then within those systems we need to identify a leverage point that we want to change and here I think um, here the situation is even better um, because there are there are only six like that's it so you, you basically choose from these six um, you can and let me quickly go through them um, you can change a policy so that could be um, a law or, or in, uh, in companies, it might be a certain, a certain way in which they, they buy products and services from other companies, like their sourcing policies, or it could be um, a UN policy. Or, so these things could be on different levels, but it's basically a, a formal rule that players in the system need to, need to follow. Then you can change practices. Uh, practices are all the things, like practices are how things are being done. Um, so for example, there could be um, when, when you have an ambulance and the ambulance hands over the patient to the hospital. It's done in a certain way, right? They, they do the handover according to, to a protocol. And the protocol is a practice, like everybody does it the same way. And you can change that. Or the way that um, teachers teach in schools, like um, usually standing in front of a class, drawing stuff on a, on a, um, set on a, bit, on a board. Um, and that's just, that's just a common practice, but that again could be changed. Like uh, education could look very differently if you change the teaching practices. Then you could look at resource flows. So uh, resources can be quite a lot of things actually. So it's money for sure. Um, but it's also political power, it's information, um, it can be uh, physical things like, like water or timber. Um, and you can look at how these things flow through the system. Who has access to information? Who has access to money? Who spends uh, political favors on what? Um, and yeah, and you can change that. Then going a little bit deeper, you can look at the relationships that make up the system. So. Um, who is in touch with whom, who 
can influence whom, who votes whom into power, um, who teaches whom in the, in the education system, um, who supports whom in, uh, in criminal proceedings. You, know, like you, you basically, you, you draw arrows um, between people and organizations and roles within the system. And then more specifically, you can look at power. Power is just, uh, it's just one aspect of relationships, but it's so important that it gets its own leverage point, basically. Um, here you say, who, who in the system can change all the other parts? Who can change the policies, the practices, the resource flows? Um, who has a voice within the system and who hasn't? Um, who, who has access to opportunities um, and why? And like, how could we change that? Power is, um, if, uh, ultimately, if you want to change systems in a sustainable way, at some point, you usually have to ask questions of power. And we see this now in Corona, we see it in, um, in the whole racism debates, classism, sexism. This is, this is where this is rooted. Um, this is where the power is, how power is organized in societies, and we as social entrepreneurs need to, need to change that. And then finally, as you already mentioned, um, there is mental model. So how do you think about the system in the first place? Um, how do you think about education? Like, do you think about the education system um, as, as the system that, that teaches people job skills so that they can then become a member, a productive member of society? Or do you think about education as the system that produces change makers so that we can, um, we can create a more just society. And depending on how you look at the education system, everything else will change. And this is also something that we as social entrepreneurs can contribute to. We can, we can guide the way towards a new understanding of society or, or smaller parts of it, like the criminal system or the education system. All right, so we have a list of systems and we have a list of, um, of leverage points that we can change and that's it. So we combine the two and then we get our intended systems changes. And um, there's a little exercise that we can do now to just, um, yeah, do that for your own work. So um, think about the, the example on the right hand side here and, um, and come up with your own statement. So um, in the something something system, we want to uh, change a practice, add a new relationship, um, get rid of an existing policy, and then say how, how that would flesh out. So which policy you want, you, do you want to get rid of? Which practice do you want to change? Which relationship do you want to add? And that's it. Um, uh, the slides don't change. Huh? Wait, do, do you all see um, this one sentence example from Raj now? Oh, in that case, let me stop sharing and share again. Maybe it, it then it works then again. Can you see it now? I see it. All right, good. So, um, Let's, uh, let's keep this in the background and, um, and just, just think about it maybe for two minutes. And then whenever you're ready, um, just share your example. So, so think about your own work. Think about some of the systemic root causes that you are addressing and, um, and put it in this, in this format. Like, um, and, and tell us about your intended systems change as clearly and succinctly as possible.
Can you go back to the last slide? The three examples. Yeah, this screen. ما صار شيء يا شباب بس كهرباء راحت عاد سوري ذا الكتريستي واز اوف was off um, and returned back. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, welcome back. Um, we are, um, people are just doing a, a quick exercise. They try to, um, for themselves. So what? Yeah, to, to talk about what is their intended systems change. Okay, thank you. All right, does somebody already have an example to share? So Odin, uh, if you don't mind, let me uh, re-explain uh, just to make sure we are all on the same page. So like we're expecting from uh, everyone now to put his problem in this format. Like, for example, Yuri Tairouz would say in the, and instead criminal defense, he would say in the blood donation system, we want to add a rule and then to his own problem. And then he will add, this will lead to, and this sentence in blue, he will adjust it and customize this sentence to his own problem. So each one of you is expected to do his own problem in this format on the right hand side of the screen. Is this clear? Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So like, is anyone is ready? Can I begin? I volunteer. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. <clears throat> um, my sentence is um, in the child mental health system, in Egypt, we change practices, relationships, mental models, and finally policies. This will lead to more resilient community. Ah, very good. But now tell us, um, let's only maybe take one. Um, let's take a look at the relationships. So what, what exactly are you changing? Like the relationship between whom? Like how is it now? And how is it going to be in the future when you have achieved your goal? 
Okay, um, relationships between uh, parents, we change the relationships between parents, relationships between parents and the child, uh, relationships between the teachers, relationships between teachers and parents, relationships between teachers and children. So we improve the relationships in many directions uh, between the adults and between the adults and the children. Ha. Huh. So, and the, and the idea is that um, if um, if the adult network around the child um, is is collectively supporting the child, then the results will be better um, compared to now when when the child and maybe the parents are on their own. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. Exactly. Right. So, it's a very concrete system. It's not just the healthcare system. Right. It's it's the mental part of it, and it's specified for the children. Mm -hmm. So that's very concrete. Um, there is a a specific lever, which is the relationships of the different bystanders around the child, um, and there's a clear change, right? There's there's have an active part in collaborating. That's what we need. This is this is perfect. So now, and once we have this, we can now develop a strategy. <laughs> But this is this is super clear. Right? Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. Anybody else? Yes, I can share uh, something of what we do. Okay. Um, please do, but um, but don't talk about the work you do. Talk about talk about the system change goal that you pursue yes. with that. Uh, for example, in Palestine and and the government budgets, policies we want to change is to increase the budget for the Ministry of Culture and Nations by adding a role to community-based organization and NGOs as well as culture and arts practitioners uh, to pressure the government uh, to uh, increase the budget. And this will lead to a more visibility for Palestinian culture and arts production locally and worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, so this this might be a combination of, of two things. So one is you want to uh, strengthen the resource flow, we, we would call it. Uh, you, you want to make more money available for um, for the yeah for a cultural system, and the money is supposed to come from the state. Um, and another thing, if I understood you correctly, the audio wasn't wasn't perfect. Um, is that you want to give artists a say in how that money is being spent. So this yes. uh, this would be a change in uh, in the power structure because um, artists would now have um, political power where they didn't have that power before. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Noel Mustafa. Uh, I'm uh, the, the founder of uh, CFPA, uh, Children of Female Prisoners Association. Uh, my sentence is uh, in the uh, judicial uh, system, uh, we need to change the law uh, to be defending the poor prisoners of poverty and uh, become uh, 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 any more uh, adjusted. Uh, we want to change the law uh, itself. Uh, nothing will be tackled from the, the roots. Well, so let's see. Um, which law exactly um, do you have now? And which one would you like to have? Uh, in the, the law now um, uh, put the woman 
uh, who can't uh, uh, afford the, the small installment in prison. Uh, in spite that she is not a criminal, she, she didn't uh, uh, make, uh, committed any crime. Uh, the law which I uh, propose to, to, uh, to be changed uh, is uh, to change this uh, into um, alternative uh, punishment, like uh, service pu public uh, work uh, or services, instead of uh, uh, putting in prison, and uh, she can um, uh, uh, pay back her, her installment from her salary in this uh, uh, public service. Ah, all right. Yeah, this is, uh, this is nice, right? So in, in, it uh, sounds quite similar to the problem that Raj identified here um, in the root causes, right? The bail system that they have in the US. It seems, it seems to be a similar issue. Um, only that it might be even worse <laughs> because you you are actually put in in jail for like small stuff that isn't even criminal a criminal offense. Um, yeah, perfect, right? So um, uh, you you change a specific law um, that you outlined. This will lead to fewer fewer women um, being put in prison and doing um, doing community work instead, and that of course. Um, Will be will be much less of an infringement of their freedoms um, than before. Yeah? Yeah. All right, really good. So um, huh, this is uh, you. Uh, I guess you are you are a more um, advanced group of fellows than we usually have on these calls um, because um, like typically it takes a few weeks to to get to this point of clarity. I mean, um, if if we did this in the globalizer process, we would of course uh, challenge it and look look at more potential goals that you might have, and then prioritize and do things like that. But but this is this is uh, yeah really really good. So you you already seem to have a very clear idea of what you want to achieve, and this is this is really when you think about this um, this five step process, this is really a great basis um, to be successful. Like once I I always feel like. Once the systems change goal is clear and clear in this one sentence version, the other parts like how you get there, what your role is, what you need to do now becomes super easy. Like, because it's just so obvious what the next steps are, right? Um, and, uh, and so I think you are in a great position to, to actually achieve those goals that you mentioned here. Um, we, we already spent one hour um, and I'm, I'd like to use the remaining 15 minutes on, on, a, uh, on, a, on a little exercise. Um, what we have been talking about so far is the more, um, the analytical side of systems change, right? Um, identifying the root causes, specifying your goals, having a template for that, looking into the subsystem and the leverage points. And it's all very, like, very, very mind focused. <laughs> um, the thing is though, there, in, in addition to systems thinking, there are other qualities that are also very important um, for being successful as a systems entrepreneur. And one of those qualities is, um, we, we call it openness. Openness is the quality to, um, like is the ability to give up control, to, um, to be, to be okay with only being one out of several members of a network that collectively drives change. Um, it's, it's the ability to be, to be okay with putting another person into the spotlight or giving credit to somebody when actually you know that you should be getting the credit. It's the, the ability to give your own employees um, the freedom to, to do what they think is right in any given situation. It's, um, it's the ability to, to put your donor in touch with an ally so that the two of you together can have more impact, even if maybe the donor will then give you less money. Um, it's, you know, it's, this, it's this ability to, to make yourself a servant of the system that you want to change, a servant of the community that can drive this change. Um, and, and to not let your, your need for, for recognition or, um, or power or resources stand in the way of doing what's necessary to achieve the change that you ultimately want to have. 
Now, this is only a very brief and rough introduction, but, but let, let's just see what happens with this introduction. Um, the, the exercise that I would like to recommend is called, we call it the ego radar. And it's super simple. Um, just grab a piece of paper, any piece of paper will do, like um, just a, like, like a sheet like this. Um, divide it in two parts, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So just, just draw a line in the middle. And the left-hand side stands for, uh, stands for the, your, your little ego devil on your shoulder. Um, the, the, the inner child, the person that, that needs recognition, even if it's, um, if it's not helpful in a given situation. On the right hand side, the right hand side stands for your, your systems entrepreneur, your Zen Buddhist, your, um, I don't know, like, you know, the, the relaxed self, <laughs> um, where, where you are willing to give up control, where you are um, willing to do the, the right thing for, for the system change that you want to achieve. And for the next five minutes, um, just, just think about the different areas of your work and life um, and, and see what kinds of thoughts come up. So for example, for me, um, I, I also started some, some social ventures and because I'm a terrible CEO, um, as soon as I started them, I'm willing to hand them over to somebody else who is actually capable of leading them. So in that sense, I have no problem at all to give up control. And that I will put that on the right hand side of, um, of this, this piece of paper. Um, at the same time, a publication or something, and somebody uses that or an idea of mine without giving me credit. I get more ill. It's really hard for me to overcome that need. Um, and I would put that on the left hand side of the piece of paper. And I would, you know, and, and I just go through the different areas of my work and life and see what comes up. Does that make sense? All right, so if you don't have any questions, um, take, uh, take five minutes in silence, just a journaling exercise, and let's see what comes up. So until um, 11 past.
All right. Those were five minutes. So um, this was, of course, just um, an ad hoc thing in a, in a webinar. But this is uh, um, this is the one exercise that I would recommend to everybody to do on maybe a bi-weekly basis or something. Sit down, think about last two weeks, and uh, and see what comes up in both of those. Um, columns. It's super helpful in uh, in identifying the barriers within ourselves to to become wrap up as a, as checkout almost. Um, I would like to do another round. Um, so a quick a quick statement from everyone. Um, just with what, what is um, what is what is maybe an idea that you take away from this call, and if you want to, and only if you want to, um, to share one thing that you wrote uh, in your ego radar exercise. Who wants to start? Odin, can you write it in the chat box so uh, everyone can see? Mm -hmm. mm, let me let me do that now, um, but just to repeat. Can mm. I? Okay. Yeah, go for it. Can I? Can I volunteer again? Okay. Um, I'm sorry uh, if I'm turning off my video because I have a terrible internet. Um, Okay, uh, because I'm, um, I'm a terrible manager, I'm a bad manager, so I'm okay, I'm more than okay to give someone the leadership of my uh, an institution. This one is what I, I'm thinking. Yeah, very nice. And I, let me just tell you, um, like especially after globalizer processes, many fellows are in this um, are in this mental crisis because it often means that they have to change their roles because of the new strategy that they have, and it's very difficult for many to let go of positions within their organizations. So, if you don't have that issue, that will really help you at some point. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Ah, yeah. Can you maybe just um, call on people one by one mm, because we, we don't. Yes, sure. Uh, uh, Mrs. Noel, uh, would you like to start? Okay. Uh, actually, <laughs> me also. I uh, in my association, and uh, this is one of my problem. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't uh, trust anybody to to uh, uh, social entrepreneurs. They, they want to change everything by by their own, and uh, this is one of our, of our problem, really. And we want your advice on it. <laughs> but at, at the same time, I, I encourage uh, my employee in a, in a weekly, the weekly meeting to, to propose their ideas and to, um, uh, I encourage very much the the bright ideas and I uh, put it in action with a bright mind. So I like minded to, to brainstorming with them 
uh, no problem in, in that aspect, but uh, at the, the final analysis, I, I am in control uh, in my as association. <laughs> Thank you, Inawil. Uh, so uh, I'm good. Would you like to jump in? Uh, so we are sharing one idea you take away from the session, and it's optional to share something that you wrote in the Ego Radar exercise. Okay, I think what Odin just explained, uh, facing his uh, new social venture, was actually 100% applying to me. Uh, before, when I started the Abdel Hayat, uh, sometimes I, I lost focus because I was so many uh, doing it. Uh, started like this, like 2017. And I then decided to uh, select one of my very close team members to be promoted to be an executive manager of the, of the association. And I'm like, daily operations after we actually sat and put a strategy for the uh, for the station uh, today today I'm very proud what the association have reached uh, we've been like five times the size that we started with uh, we've, we've solved actually a number of current challenges facing the community where uh, actually moved now to a national wide uh, uh, organization, not just focusing in, on, on one small region or city. Now we actually we're operating in more than six uh, cities of Egypt. Okay, uh, at the same time, uh, I was uh, two days before was in, uh, in uh, one of the cities in, in Egypt, Tanta, we were signing a protocol uh, uh, that people uh, actually don't have the, the, the finance, the access to clean water actually, and this is was this to, to soap, which is the blood health, and of course, uh, water is one of the points that affects uh, our our blood health. So I, I, I personally don't have any any uh, ego regarding someone else leading uh, the organization. Even uh, he's actually the one is being actually like the, the showman in the in the, in the media, uh, and uh, I'm I'm totally actually fine with that. Uh, I don't have a problem uh, as long as things are actually working as per the strategy that we have been uh, put in the first place. Uh, thank you, Amda. Um, Abdel Fateh, uh, would you like to check out? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I guess it has been great to, to hear you, Odin, and to see all the fellows. Um, I guess uh, sometimes we have difficulties in naming what we are doing, like system change or these terminologies that we do, but sometimes we have difficulties in putting labels uh, on them. But I guess, for example, uh, when they think that it is a business and not an organization that work to make a change. So, for example, we do six programs, and uh, when we have no budget or whatever, for me, my philosophy, with or without money, we do it. But for them, if this program is consuming money and not making income, and for our work mostly it doesn't really generate income, so we should just cancel it. And this is the struggle I have with the, the board, for example, of my organization and so on. Uh, in terms of the ego, yes, of course, you want to be the leader, you want to be informed of what is happening, but I guess with Young people who I started with since 1998 with the uh, Arwad, we have really young people who are committed, who know the philosophy of what I call beautiful resistance, and who uh, think that they can change the world without need to carry a gun or shoot everybody else or whatever. And they think living rather than dying and inspiring hope and be role models. But it's still challenging to, to, to see that. Uh, it's not a business, it is 
just a community-based organization that tries to make the change and not to be dictated uh, a code of behavior by donors or by uh, political parties and so on. So this is where we are. I am fighting to survive in being what we are and not what we should be in terms of business. <laughs> Thank you, Abdel Fattah. Uh, Amin? Amin, can you hear us? Yes, yes, Aya, sorry. So would you like to check out and say like one idea you take away from this session and it's optional to share something you wrote in the Ego Radar exercise? Uh, I want to share with you um, something uh, about my work uh, with Tibu in, in Morocco. Um, thank you, uh, Odin, for this uh, wonderful session. Um, in Morocco, for example, there is no PE classes in uh, primary schools and in preschools. So I think this is the my first big problem. And I identified uh, systems that drive this big problem, first Minister of National Education, and we had the opportunity to sign a big agreement with the Minister of National Education, with the Ministry of Interior, and with the Ministry of Youth and Sports. So now we are in the same um, in the same route with all the ministries who who have the same problem so um i i think so thank you so much for this exercise because it to be like uh, safe with the with the with my uh, big dream is to uh, make uh, pe classes in uh, 7078 700 schools in Morocco by 2030. So uh, there is 4 million kids in primary schools. They don't have access to sports. And um, yeah, I think the, the, I, 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 I identified the big problem. I identified the system. And now we are working together to, to solve the problem. And I think by 2023, we will solve uh, this problem. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amin. Uh, Wale? Wale, would you like to check out? Um. I think she cannot hear, so I just go myself. So uh. I am. Uh, can I uh, can I ask a question uh, uh, before before we finish? Sure. Can I advise? I when I want some consultation, can I con connect with you? Uh, to, to have some private uh, conversation about my uh, uh, system change in my course sometimes? <laughs> now I, uh, I will get myself into trouble. Um, what, what you can always do, of course, is, um, is reach out to any Ashoka employee um, if you have a question. Um, I, chances are that, that we cannot do um in the like an individual strategy um in-depth like development of any kind um but i can if if you have concrete questions i can definitely share um, materials that might be helpful things you could use uh, things like that so yeah do reach out with your questions i just want to limit expectations somehow because um if, if we start doing that then we will not be doing anything anything but helping individual fellows develop these strategies Thank you, Noel. Thank you, Odin. So um, I just like to check out myself. So um, 
um, like if I if I took away something, it it would be definitely I took away a lot of things. But for me, because uh, we're getting into like two selection panels uh, for Ashoka and. Uh, we're interviewing candidates, writing profiles, so this is the right time for us. Um, and I like the, the problem, the tree problem exercise, the problem tree, and uh, it has been a long time since I didn't uh, do it. Um, so uh, yeah, it was very useful for me, the breakdown of the problems and uh, uh, just putting them in priority and selecting like one or two problems that the social entrepreneur can focus about as the, can focus on as the as first step. Um, okay, so um, uh, anyone else would like to check out? Okay. Sorry. Uh, yes, of course. We we will make the presentation um, available. Um, we will also recommend a few other materials um, like videos and podcasts and uh, we have a lot of stuff on this subject um, that, that is not just 100 page reports but, but we try to make it a, bit, a little bit more fun and digestible. So yeah, feel free to, to use all of those things uh, and this is going to be in your inbox uh, very soon. Thanks so much everybody for, for joining this session. Um, again, if you have uh, any more questions about any of, of these topics or related things, reach out to me at any point. Um, happy, happy to send at least some, some information your way. Uh, that's the least we can do. And um, yeah, thanks so much for sharing. Um, this, is, this has been an incredible group. Again, I, I haven't seen any group that was able to like three times in a row really nail their intended system change statements. <laughs> that's yeah, kudos to you. And good luck uh, achieving those goals. Um, more now more than ever, I guess. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you, Uden, for your time, and uh, thank you all for uh, uh, your time. Uh, we hope uh, this was useful for you. Uh, just a quick note that uh, we'll be sharing the recording of the session, uh, the presentation, and any other material that Udin can pass to you. And also, we're going to um, have like a very, very quick survey in five minutes right after the session. So I would appreciate if you can um, answer it uh, right away. And uh, that's it. Have a nice uh, rest of the day. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.